Welcome to the third and final day of the 12th International Microair Vehicle Conference. Uh, today, this is our last day, and it is going to be full of very nice, interesting keynotes. Uh, the first keynote of the day is going to be delivered by Professor Nicolas Marchand. And then in the afternoon, we will have the keynote from Professor Rogelio Lozano. Um, today, we also have the awards ceremony at 12 p.m. lunchtime, maybe in some places. Uh, so please don't, do not miss that uh, ceremony. We're going to announce the winners of the best conference paper, the best technological for application paper, and the best student paper. And of course, we are going to have paper sure. sessions. So we are going to have the session design one, design two, and autonomous navigation two. And without further delay, I will ask Professor Fermi Guerrero uh, from WAP University to please introduce our guest, uh, our distinguished keynote speaker of this morning. Please go ahead, Fermi. Hello, thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you very much for joining us in this uh, last day of IMF. Um, it's great pleasure for me to introduce Professor Nicolas Marchand. Uh, Nicolas Marchand received his diploma, the engineer equivalent to MSc in electrical engineer and his PhD in control theory, both from l'Institut Polytechnique de Grenoble uh, in 1995 to 1999, respectively. Currently, he is a senior, senior research, and he is the head of GIPSA Lab. GIPSA Lab is a research lab that gathers around 400 people on signal, image processing, space control, cognition, robotics, and learning. His research interests include event-based control, control and stabilization of flying robots, and control theory for computer science. Uh, he's the coordinator of many national and international projects. He's created the CNRS National Research Group on Predictive Control and lead the Mobile Robotics Group of Robotics and T-Rex Project. Besides this responsibility, he's the author or co-author of uh, four journal papers and refereed journals, four patents and over 100 conference papers. Um, furthermore, I would like to say that I am very proud to, to introduce Professor Nicolas because he was my PhD advisor, of course, many years ago. Uh, currently, we have many collaboration and one bilateral project, so, Thank you, Nicolas, for accepting this, uh, this invitation. Um, if you please, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, uh, Fermi. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to be here, not only because you are now not only uh, my, my ex-PhD student, but also a friend. Uh, it's my pleasure because I, um, the, 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 I have strong relationship with Mexico and it's always a pleasure for me to go there. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, I have to stay in, in, in Europe, in France. Uh, so I'm located in uh, Grenoble, France. It's in the, the French Alps. So I have mountains all around me and the snow uh, just began to, to, to cover the mountains. So the, the, the top of the mountains uh, are now white. So it's quite nice. I can see them just in front of me. Today, uh, I will talk uh, you about uh, everything that is based on events, and I will present many, many things on, on that, and uh, especially the, the interest that uh, it can have for, uh, for robotics and control, especially for UAVs. So my uh, talk will be in, uh, in, in three two parts and a conclusion, the, the, the two parts. The first one will be just focusing on, uh, on um, more theoretical aspects, just in order to show what, uh, what are the problems that can occur, what means, what, what we mean by even base and so on. 
And then uh, after uh, this, I will focus on uh, on uh, on four examples that we 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 worked on uh, with connection with UAVs, of course. And it will be much more less theoretical uh, for that. And then I will conclude uh, the talk. So. I start with the principle of event-based sampling. And because everyone is not necessarily familiar with control, I will just make a focus on uh, what we consider by control. So control usually means that we consider a plant and we have some measure of the plant that are called outputs, usually written as Y, an input usually written as a U. And control means that I want to, to, to fill that block in order to be able uh, to, to drive the output Y to a set point. So just uh, to recall the, the, the values, usually Y is the output, U is the control, and Inside the plant, we have X, that is the internal state of the system. And usually what we want is to drive the error be between the, 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 the setting points of Y and the real Y to zero. Of course, uh, it's an oversimplified explanation of, of control, but uh, I think uh, most of the concept uh, of feedback loop uh, is here. And uh, I will not focus on controllability, observability, and different thing, things like that, robustness, and many, many, many other things that we, you can find in control. Control is everywhere. And uh, you will see that uh, the, 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 the example that I will show you are very uh, various uh, also in, in, in terms of application to UAVs. OK, the, usually what we do to compute this control, uh, we can compute this at any time, which means we compute this at any time. And U is computed at any time, which means that this can only be done with analog circuits. And nowadays, uh, we do not do this anymore for 99.99999% uh, of the applications. Usually what we do is uh, that we compute the, the control value at some time instance, and then we block the value until the next sample. And this is typically uh, what we, 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 we have. And uh, there is a Nyquist challenge condition that needs to be fulfilled. That means that you need to sample sufficiently fast with respect to the dynamic of the, of the system, which means the system cannot ex escape between two samples. That's uh, the, the, the easy way to, to like look at the thing. Um, unfortunately, it's not necessarily very appropriate, especially for nonlinear systems where you get oversampling because you can have very, very fast uh, behaviors at some areas of, the, of the, 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 the state space and very slow at other areas of the, of the state space. So you can, uh, it can yield to, to oversampling. So the idea was, uh, why not sampling asynchronously, which means only when needed, but what means when needed? And that's uh, exactly what I will explain uh, what we, we has been done in the, in the 10 years ago uh, for that. So we focus now on event-based control, so changing the way we sample. So usually we sample like that. It means that we periodically freeze the value of the, of the variables and we keep the value constant. So clearly it's, uh, you can see my, um, my mouse Yes, 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 we can see it. We can see. Okay, great. Because I'm I'm pointing things with with it, so it's better if you can see it. So it's clearly um, something that is close to the Riemann's integral. So you fix it uh, for a constant period, and then you continue. And the idea of even based sampling was not to sample vertically, but to sample horizontally. And this is uh, more uh, linked to what uh, is called the, the Lebesgue integral. And there's something that is very interesting that I will show you is that the Nyquist-Chinon uh, condition is not necessary 
uh, in, in that case. So the first step was to sample horizontally. And the question was how we can choose those levels. So just uh, to, 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 for, to do that, uh, what we did, we, we take a feedback control. So it, it's my U that I want to compute depending up, upon the, the value of the state of the system and eventually upon the, the, the time T. And I will add something that we call an event function that uh, also depends upon the, the, the state of the system and the time. And that is such that you will recompute the control if this value become if this even function becomes negative. So if you look to what happens, you have the even function, the even function vanishes, the control is constant until it vanishes, and when it vanishes, you update the value of the control. And then you continue, and you can see that the event can change. So this is the usual way we uh, try to, to compute this level. And the main interest is that if you keep the, 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 this event function negative, you get the continuous time approach. And if you get an event function that is periodic, you get the classical periodic sampling. So you retrieve the, 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 the way we sample usually. So this is a generalization of general periodic or aperiodic or continuous time uh, that can be uh, put in that form. So it's quite an interesting uh, form. The main problem is that uh, you can have many, many problems. For instance, I take uh, a, a very uh, simple system. Uh, the system is uh, just a simple integrator. And if you uh, take a control minus x, the trajectory uh, is updated when uh, you get this. You get exactly what I told you, periodic sampling, uh, and it works uh, very well. If you now change the value of the control and you update uh, on other uh, levels, that is uh, this kind of, a, of, a, of value, so you, you can see that the number uh, the, the, the more you get close to zero, the more you sample, then you get this problem that the trajectory will converge to zero, but you have a zero phenomenon, which means that after some time instance that is approximately equal to 1.86 seconds, it's, there is no more uh, mathematical definition of the solution of this system. So clearly, this is not physically implementable, and this behavior uh, needs to be avoided. It means that the, the sampling set uh, uh, must depend upon the control. I will give you more examples. So more examples, u equal to minus x as the, the first example, but I change the way to sample, and I sample when the, the, the absolute value of x is equal to one over some uh, k that belongs to z. And in that case, you get exactly the same as the previous phenomena, except that it goes to zero when the time goes to the infinite. So when the time goes to the infinite, the sampling is becoming equal to zero, so infinitely fast. So this is also something that needs to be avoided. So what we want to guarantee is that there is a minimal uh, sampling period, and you can be sure that you put the system to the origin without having this sampling period becoming too small. And another case that can happen is exactly the reverse, and it's something that uh, is very interesting for, for us. You take another control, another way to compute uh, the levels, here in that case, also the levels are becoming uh, more dense when you go close to the origin, but you can see that the sampling period is increasing with the time. So it means that the more you go close to the origin, the less you need to uh, sample. And it clearly shows that the shannon nyquist uh, criteria is inconsistent because here the sampling interval goes to the infinite, so becomes infinite large, infinitely large when the trajectory goes to the origin. 
So the question that naturally arises is here, my system is stable. So is this possible if the system is unstable? So is this possible to update the control less and less and less frequently, even if the system is unstable? And it has been shown that if you take this system that is unstable, you can compute the trajectory of the system between two sampling. And if you compute, take this control that is just a linear control with this uh, type of uh, uh, sampling uh, conditions, in that case, the, the, the time between two samples becomes larger and larger when the times becomes larger. So even if the system is, is unstable, the Nyquist-Shannon is not uh, consistent. So it means that really on, I mean, on every system, it should be possible to make a control that do not need to be updated when the system go close to the, the, the stable point, the origin. And that's uh, the idea that we, we try to work on. So general formula, just to show you that the, the, the theoretical work uh, has been done in terms of control uh, of event-based system. So typically, you take the general affine in the control system, the notion of what is called control Yapuna function, which means that there exists an energy function that can be made decreased. So it means that V is my energy function. And on the trajectory on, of the system, I can find one control such that my Lyapunov of function is decreasing. And I have a, a small control property that needs to be added. It means that when I go close to the origin, I can find the, the U that is also small. And that's the idea that is behind. And uh, in uh, Eduardo Zontag showed that uh, he was not alone, uh, alone, showed that if item one and two are true, then there is a stabilizing feedback for the system. And if there is one, two, and three, the stabilizing feedback is in addition continuous. So it's really a, an important uh, result because it, it shows that with very light condition, you can build a control. And also it shows that there is a sort of equivalence between control Yapuna function and the existence of a stabilizing feedback. And the question was exactly the same, uh, but for event-based control. So I mean, I have exactly the same type of system, exactly the same existence of control Lyapunov function, exactly the same small control property. And the question that we answered uh, um, almost 10 years ago is that if item one and two is true, then there exists an event-based stabilizing feedback without chattering in the control of the update, which means you can be sure that there is a minimal a sampling period for all the stabilization. And if one, two, and three are verified, you can also prove that the, the, the control can be chosen continuous. So you can really extend this general formula to even based uh, feedback, which means that nowadays, if you have a, a, a Lyapunov function for a system, it's very easy to uh, design even based uh, control and you can, uh, be sure that there will not be this uh, uh, Zeno phenomena, uh, chattering phenomena uh, that, that can be avoided. Okay. Now, just uh, I will stop on the on the general uh, result, and I will show you how you can apply that uh, on uh, on UAVs. I will not focus on uh, how you model, you model a UAV and so on. Probably you had a lot of presentation on that and uh, I will not focus on that. I will only focus on, on, the, on the results. So first, uh, we, we, with this approach, we try to control really the, the low level controls of, the, of, the, of the, the UAV and we try to control, which means the four rotor speeds in order to control the attitude of the UAV. 
and we apply the event-based control. And with this approach, we showed that we use less com computer power and uh, we compute 82% less the, the control than with conventional control. And if you make a focus on this, so just, sorry, I go back. Uh, just on the slides, here you have the angular velocity. Here, more important, it's the angles that uh, we want to, to reach. We want to stabilize the system, so to reach zero angles. Here, it's the torque that we apply. And here, it's the evolution of uh, the, the, the Lyapunov function. And the evolution of the event uh, function is here. And the, the, the curve that I want to underline is the, the, those last, last one, which means the flag. So I made a focus on the flag. The flag, that, what does it mean? Each time it is one, it means that you recompute the control. And when it is zero, it means that you keep the control constant. And you can see that the control is kept constant for quite long time. I mean, here you have a 0 0.2, almost 0 0.3 seconds without update of the control. It's clearly not neglectable uh, when, when you compare this to, to, to the rotational dynamic of a drone that goes quite fast. So it means that you can really have a, 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 a control strategy without updating the control when it's not necessary. OK, another strategy that we developed is to use event-based control with a, to, 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 to derive safe piloting. So uh, many, many people are working on, on autonomous UAVs, and probably it's, it's, it's really important to de develop this. But uh, there is also a lot of, uh, of application in which you cannot remove the pilots for many reasons. Uh, one reason is that uh, we are still much better than the, than the, the, the automatic pilot, and especially to, to, to take uh, high-level decisions. And the other reason is for um, the, the, the problem of who will be responsible in case of a crash. So what we try to do is to uh, build safe piloting, which uh, means that you still have a pilot, but you also have a control loop but uh, the, the pilot will not be uh, uh, a, will not be able to do things that are compromising for the security of the UAV. And I will show you how we, we build that. So for this, just uh, some definitions of, uh, of what we, is called some set definitions. I will uh, I will that I will say. So uh, a positive invariant set is a set so that if you start in the, st in the set with any disturbance on the system, so you have to, 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 to limit the disturbances, the state of the system will stay for, in the set for all k positive. So it means that if you start in the set, whatever the perturbation, you will stay in the set. Then there is a, the, the R is for robustly because there is disturb, disturbances. So the minimum robust, robustly uh, positively invariant set is uh, the, the, the RPE that includes all possible RPE sets. So I will detail later uh, how we use that. And given the system, so typically a UAV, but it works also for any system, a feedback law different bounds on the control that you have here, on uh, the, 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 the perturbation that you can apply, et cetera. The minimum RPI set can be efficiently computed using polyhedral, polyhedral or ellipsoid approximations. So it means that this set exists and can be computed. And then we consider the, 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 the following system. So you take the plant. You take the control, but you take a switching condition that I will detail, and you switch between closed loop or open loop without control. You will guess what is the interest. So the interest is when you switch, and you switch according to if the state is in some state S2. So S2 is not S or S1 that I previously defined. 
it's another one set, S2. And this other set is called the, we called it the, the event set S2. And we compute it uh, so that if you are out of S1, you can guarantee that you join S1. And if you are in S1, you can go here in S2 or to leave, uh, you can go in S2 or to leave S2, but uh, in S2, the system will be in open loop. And there's one thing that you can prove is that once you reach S1 or once you reach S2, you can never go out from S1 or S2. And this has been proved, uh, you can prove everything, so it's in the paper. And the interest of that is that we can use this to have control of UAVs and to go into contact. So you can just go into a, a, close to a wall and touch the wall and it will work. So the idea is how you do the control. Here, the perturbation, you will put the pilot as perturbation. And the even switched control switches between a closed loop control and an open loop. And the even set S2 can be seen as the safe set where the pilot can pilot without any problem. And S1 can be seen as the rescue set, which means when it's better if the pilot stop piloting the, the, the UAV. And it's an automatic switch between S2 that is not dangerous, so we can let the pilot drive the UAV. S1 is dangerous, and we take back, apply a control that brings the system back to S2, where the pilot can, can pilot the things. OK, so just to show you, here it's a video. You will see, uh, I don't know, but somewhere here, a UAV will arrive and will uh, try to, to, to go through the wall. And you can see that the pilot is pushing and it stops alone. So clearly, you define the obstacle. And once you have defined the obstacles, you can uh, avoid a collision. You can also uh, do this with, uh, with virtual, uh, virtual obstacles that you, that you can add. So this was our first uh, work on that. And uh, then later on, we built a, a spin-off that is called Arcadrone, and uh, who is now selling uh, uh, games based on, on, on UAVs. So you can see here UAVs. You can see kids playing. So it means that you can let everyone pilot your drone without collision, without uh, uh, collision between UAVs, and without collision uh, in, in the walls. And this is now, uh, there is a client on the, on the attraction since now uh, two years. Of course, there was the, the pandemic, but they had only one crash during the two years. And I will show you uh, how, it, uh, how it works. So we had the, the, the Le Monde, which is a very famous, I don't know if you have the sound too. Up, I turn off the sound. So you can see everyone can pilot the drone and here they, they try to collide and they cannot collide. And the game is usually to try to, to catch uh, a flag that is uh, symbolized by a light and to keep the flag as long as you can with respect to, to the, other, uh, the other team that you have in front of you. So this, uh, this uh, game and application was uh, awarded at, at the CES in Las Vegas uh, four years or three years ago, I don't remember. And uh, now it's a company with, uh, with 15 people and they are selling uh, this game to, to USA, Switzerland, uh, everywhere in Europe. So it's quite uh, impressive uh, how you can, uh, the, 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 how it grows. Uh, as a company. So we went uh, later on obstacle avoidance and we tried to, to, to develop other things, but uh, without knowing the, the, the obstacles. 
The safe piloting is based on the assumptions that we know where the obstacles are. Now we are working on a, on a strategy where we don't know where the obstacles are. And uh, typically, so it's, it's a plot of, a, of what we do. Uh, we have a UAV, we generate, we, we try to localize the, 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 the obstacle. I will show you how it's using a stereo vision. And then we generate a lot of strategy. We choose the best one according to, 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 to a cost. And we try to track this trajectory. And according to uh, an event function that is based on, on a cost, uh, that is uh, uh, detailed here. It's uh, it's very close to predictive control. Uh, we do not update the trajectory to track. And once the trajectory is too far from uh, the real uh, world, or once the, the, the cost becomes uh, bad with respect to what we, we want to achieve, we regenerate a new uh, strategy. So uh, here again, it's uh, we generate in real time uh, uh, trajectories according to an event-based uh, function. So here, uh, I will just split to the other, the last one. Okay, because in that, in that, uh, okay. So it's a more simple case, so it's easier to explain uh, here. The the UAV starts here. The the black dots are uh, obstacles. And uh, the, the area that you see here is the area where we are sure there is no obstacle. So you can see we do not see everywhere. And uh, what we do all the time is we generate a trajectory. OK, so the UAV is here. We generate trajectory. We choose between one of those trajectories. And you can see that the trajectory are in the area where we are sure there is no obstacles. And we track this trajectory, updating this trajectory everywhere. I will talk about the, the, the rest uh, later, and I will go back to my first slide. OK, so now many more obstacles. So it's, it's in simulation. And you can see that we can uh, manage uh, obstacle avoidance using this uh, event-based strategy in a quite very efficient way. And we can generate a lot of trajectory, avoid obstacles, and reach the first target, target that is here. And then we jump to another one that is here. And then we come back to, 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 to the beginning of the, of, the, uh, of the trajectory. So clearly, with that, we can really uh, measure the time uh, measure the number of collision, the speed, and so on. So we have everything to do benchmark uh, for uh, collision avoidance. Uh, I will continue because, of course, what we started with that is that we wanted to see if it's possible if we have moving obstacles. And so it's the next uh, simulation. And in that case, you can see all the, the, the dots that are moving. So it's now moving obstacles. And you can see that uh, if the obstacles are moving sufficiently slow with respect to the, the, the maximal dynamic of the UAV, it works uh, quite very well. And you are able uh, to, to, to manage trajectory in between uh, moving obstacles. And uh, unfortunately, here you see almost there was a collision, but uh, no collision finally. But if you increase the speed of the obstacle, which is the case here, you can see that it does not work anymore. And all the, the, the red cross means that, that you had a collision. And in that case, of course, the obstacle are moving too fast with respect to you. And uh, you reach the, 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 the maximum, uh, the, the, the best that you can with, uh, with the algorithm. Everything here was in simulation. So I just come back. To, and here it's, uh, it's made with stereo vision and we recompute a depth map of the, of the environment with a sort of, a, of, a, of memory of what uh, happened uh, just before we, we crossed the obstacle in order to avoid that you go left uh, just uh, close to an obstacle. And uh, of course, uh, what we try to do is to extend this. So now 
we checked here in a, in a motion capture room in order to check that this also works for real. So in that case, the system does not know where the obstacles are. And it detects the, the, the obstacles using stereovision that is embedded in the, in, the, in, in the UAV. And here you will see the, the, the vision algorithm. So here, just to check that uh, the behavior of the real world and the behavior of the, of the, the simulation is, uh, is very similar. And uh, we, we can manage this uh, even for real uh, systems. And you can see that the trajectory is quite fast. It's in real time, no acceleration. Uh, the simulation is quite fast with respect to the obstacles. And finally, uh, we tried to do this uh, in a real world. And uh, we implement this to avoid, uh, no, it's not that one. So we implement it uh, to, 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 to fly. Uh, into a real environment with trees and so on. So it avoids uh, the trees. And uh, you can see here the UAV moving uh, through the trees with uh, the, the image that comes from the UAV here in black and white. And uh, here you have the, the measure of the obstacles. When it is red, it means that there is a, an obstacle that is very close. And here you have the, the, the trajectory in, uh, in, in green that are generated. So it's not always very explicit. Here you have an obstacle above that has been seen. So he will go down and move forward. OK, and uh, check the time. And last application. So the more uh, we, we, we applied this, the more we, we went to, to, to higher uh, level problems, and uh, we use the even based control in order to improve and to fasten uh, learning in, uh, in, in uh, neural networks. So I will not uh, detail everything, but uh, we work on a, a convolutional uh, neural network, CNN, uh, that is not very, very classical in, in machine learning algorithm and very suitable for image classification. We did not apply the, uh, to, to, to image classification. Well, the, the, the application to UAVs is not on, uh, on image classification. And classically, CNN are parameterized by weights. So the weights is something that we try to optimize in order to tune the network. And we optimize it using uh, an iterative uh, algorithm so typically gradient descent and so on using initial weights. And uh, the context is that you, you have data coming uh, dynamically in batches. So regularly, you can uh, take a new batch of data in order to, to have new data. And uh, there is one parameter that you can change that is called the learning rate. And until now, the learning rate is usually something that we, we, we keep constant. So in that case, we did not uh, kept the learning rate constant and because our interest was to learn as fast as possible. So we would like to learn as fast as possible, which is quite interesting in terms of, uh, of learning for, for UAVs because the more you know the environment fast, the less you consume a battery uh, in order to, to, to be uh, to be aware of your, of your environment. So I will not focus on the biography that is quite uh, uh, complicated. I will not focus also on that. Just the idea is we changed the learning rate, which was our uh, control, uh, control command, not our control uh, on the system. And what we, we, we looked at was what is called the loss function, which, uh, which is in a certain case, a measure of the performance of the neural network. So I would go very fast on that. It's uh, what is the metrics and so on, uh, etc. I go will go very fast just to show you a typical uh, evolution of the two variables that uh, that you can look at uh, with uh, 
with um, with neural network. It's the accuracy. So it's the real, uh, I would say, precision of your neural network. The problem is that the accuracy uh, is something that you cannot measure in line. And the other variable is what we call the, the loss. So you can see that when the, the neural network is learning, this loss is decreasing. So it's clear you learn from the system, so you get better and better, and then you don't get further improvement uh, because you learn everything you could you can on the on the, the data that you are using. Okay, I will not focus on that. Different strategy, typically decaying uh, 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 learning rates. Uh, there are all the other strategy with uh, exponential decay sine wave of the learning rate. And what we proposed was to uh, either to make a P control phase. We did an E phase where we increased the learning rate and which was uh, quite new. No one uh, thought that increasing the learning rate could improve the system. And then we have a control phase that uh, P or PD uh, controller in order to bring back the, 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 the learning rate to some kind of optimal value. I will not focus on that. The event base that we, we took uh, is uh, event based PID that I did with, uh, with my colleague Sylvain Durand from uh, iCube in, in, in France when he was uh, in PhD at the same time. Uh, no, he was a little bit later than, uh, than Fermi. But when you do everything, you can uh, just see that um, if you increase, uh, if you, sorry, if you apply even based control here, sorry, you get a better result than if you apply not even based control. And if you continue, I will not focus on that. Classically, here we learned on two very uh, standard data sets. And the data sets are things like that where you need to learn plane, car, birds, uh, cat, and so on. And the other is, is this kind of data set where you learn shoes, uh, shirt, skirt, and so on. And we applied this. And this is the, the final uh, uh, curve that we have. And here in blue, you have how fast the classical uh, um, learning uh, behaves. So in blue and in red here, very close to the blue, it's clearly Ah, the, the usual way to learn follows that curve. And if you apply the, all those uh, um, uh, PI controller, you don't improve, improve much. But if you apply a, a PI controller, even based with an increase phase, in, an increasing phase, then you really improve how your uh, network learns. And it, learn, it learns much more faster than the usual uh, approach. So I will not go furthermore, just, just a final curve uh, to show everything double even based bec because you can put even based in the PID, but you can also put even based in how you take new batches to improve the learning. And we did twice double even based uh, 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 PD controller. And this is how it goes much, much, much faster. So you reach the optimal much faster than with the other uh, techniques. And it's really, really interesting in terms of, uh, in terms of learning, uh, especially if you don't have uh, much patches. So this was published in a control system letters uh, two years, one year ago, last year. And then uh, we applied this to UAV. So UAV is a domain with a lot of un uncertainties in terms of model, the, the, the behavior of, the, of the, the freed and so on, and where we need a, a precise control. And uh, especially uh, there is a challenge uh, that is called the, the Drone Racing League, where we try to, to, to have a racing uh, UAVs 
uh, in order to, 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 to have a uh, very efficient control. And there was a, a first results on the use of neural network to con compensate the ground effects that are very positive. And that's on what we are working currently, not on the ground effect, but on the usage of a, of a, um, a neural network uh, for this. And I would show you our first results that are not uh, published, but I will present you the idea. So the idea is uh, the model of a UAV is nonlinear. What we want to do is we want to just focus on the linear approximation of the nonlinear model, because it's on this linear approximation, it's very easy and very fast to compute a control. And we want to add a neural network that will correct my control so that the control that I designed here on this system, when I apply it on this one, it will behave like that one. So the idea is I want to add a my neural network to remove all the nonlinear a part of the system, and so the system will behave just like a linear system. And the, 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 the idea of uh, putting this as a fit forward is that it will be possible to inactivate, so you, you can remove this term in order to, to keep uh, stability issues, or you will be able to saturate it if you have a saturate control uh, uh, issues. And this is typically what, what we get. So this is on uh, the, the trajectory on which we, we, we learned. And uh, I will make, I don't know if I can, yeah, I can uh, zoom on my picture. So uh, you can see that in, uh, in green, dot green, you have the behavior of the linear approximation. And you can see that in blue, you have the behavior of the system, nonlinear system with the neural network. And in red, you have the behavior of the nonlinear system without the neural network. And our uh, first conclusion is that neural, oops, uh, neural network is, is really efficient and is more efficient than the, the integral term of a controller to compensate um, the, the, the unmodelized uh, um, phenomena and the nonlinear uh, system. So clearly we want to, to go deeper in this approach because it seems a promising uh, approach to uh, have a very efficient way to generate very efficiently trajectory and then to have a behavior that will be very close to the, the linear uh, approach. So I will conclude my, my talk. Uh, by uh, by uh, uh, my feeling about my uh, ten years, I'm looking. Yeah, the, the time is good. Uh, about what I've done uh, these ten years ago, uh, even based strategy are really powerful to face many robotics problem. So you can apply it on on low level control. You can apply it on trajectory generation and update, and. Uh, what is good is that it can handle the interaction between non-periodic processes, typically learning, vision, and so on, with the control that is more periodic or that is more close to something uh, that is regular. And this strategy is also biologically inspired. And uh, in real life, nothing is, is periodic. And it means also that we, we can take ideas in the, the biology in order to, to to, to find new approaches to control uh, UAVs. And for instance, we have a project uh, to have UAVs in the dark where we do not lighten the, the area, but we just make flash. And there is a fish that are behaving like that. So you can really be inspired by biology to, to, to get new ideas. And to uh, end my talk, I would like to thank all my uh, students and, and colleagues that work uh, with me. So uh, Sophie, that uh, she's now uh, at INRIA, uh, Zilong, who is uh, now at uh, um, in Switzerland, Fermi that you know, Sylvain in iCube, Jonathan and Amory, who are two uh, engineers that work with me, 
John, that is a colleague, and all my PhD that work with me, because uh, all what I talked about is just uh, their work and not mine. And I will finish with a picture of something that is just uh, three kilometers away from my office. So if you want uh, to visit it, it's, uh, it's difficult to access, but it's really a beautiful place, very close to Grenoble. Thank you. I don't know if uh, there is question. I was talking, so I did not look to the to to, to the chat. Okay, but... thanks very much, Nicolas, for this uh, impressive uh, presentation. Uh, yes, there are some uh, questions. Guido de Chrome, uh, very interesting talk. Question on the event-based learning. What is the intuition behind? E and PD learning better than PD? Uh, so, so the intuition is something that uh, we, we saw on event-based control. Event-based control uh, is often more efficient than uh, the same control applied uh, in a periodic way or in a, in a continuous way. And the idea is because you keep the control, usually the control that you keep is stronger than when you update it. Because when you go close to a, a, a position that you want to achieve, uh, the control also usually go to zero. So if you keep it, you, you put more energy in the system in a certain way, so you go faster. So usually, even base control goes faster. And um, for learning, it's exactly the same because the the learning rate is the speed at which the, 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 the optimization algorithm uh, converges. So if you keep it strong, you will converge faster. And that's also the idea that we had in, in, in the publication, which means that when you don't gain much uh, in the data, one strategy is increase your learning rate. And if despite increasing your learning rate, you still don't learn more, it means that you learn everything that you could on the batch of data and you need to take a new one. And that's the strategy uh, the, 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 that we formulated in terms of, of event-based. But clearly that's the, the, the approach that we had. So the idea is just every time look at how fast you go and if you, you don't go fast enough, Increase your, increase your speed or take new data. Okay, thank you very much. And um, there are another question uh, from Guido de Crown also. Uh, hey. it, it, and as it been tested on a large group of data set uh, in order to finding or in order to generalize this approach, uh, I, did, I didn't catch the question. You, you, you mean, uh, does it work for, uh, for data sets that are not big? Yeah, it has yeah. been tested on large group of data. So if I will go back, if you look to uh, that, this is applied on, uh, on very large group of data. So it works uh, on data that I don't remember the size uh, of the data. So here, the, the, the number, the, the, the datas are really, 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 really big. So clearly it's a very complex neural network that you have. But if you look to the UAV, it's really impressive because we, we, we were afraid that we need, a, I, not, I would not say a 100, 200 or, or 1000 trajectory in order to be able to learn. It's not the case at all. You take 10 trajectories and you have enough to improve really, really your, your, your control. And it's something that we still do not really understand how the, the simple neural network can learn that much on so few data. So it's quite interesting because it also means that we will not the, the, we not be uh, forced to learn and then to apply. 
And we also uh, we will be able to learn and to learn also on the closed loop trajectory. So it's 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 really um, promising for that. Especially what what we have in mind is we do not know at all the system. We apply a generic control that works on any UAV. We start the UAV and the UAV will learn itself. So the control will, all, will always be the same. And uh, typically it's something that the, 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 the company that I told you, Drone Interactive, uh, really wants because they have different sorts of UAVs, especially when they renew their, uh, their UAVs. The UAVs may be different. And they would they would like to have just one control for all the UAVs. Thanks. Thank you. Thank sort you of, a, of, of a online identification. It's it's very similar to that. Okay, super. Uh, uh, we have another question from Hugo Rodriguez. Uh, does the arcade game have a position system like OptiTrack? Do you mean uh, which, which application? In the drone interactive, in yes, arcade, they have a, arcade yes, game. Yes, yes, you can uh, you can see this. In the case, do you have any position system for yes. localize the drone? Each time they sell an attraction, they sell a, um, a positioning system with it. So I can uh, just go further. I think you can. Uh, there is a focus on uh, on one UAV. Yeah, yeah. Where can we have a? Maybe at, just at the beginning. Yeah. You can see here these uh, these uh, balls that are characteristic to 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 motion capture systems. Okay. So you, I think, uh, are you using? OptiTrack for that, no? Or, yeah, it's no? it's it's OptiTrack system that uh, that uh, they use. Yes. Okay. In the lab, we have both OptiTrack and uh, and Vicon, but uh, but here for 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 the this attraction, they use OptiTrack. It works very well. No problem with it. Okay. Google say from the point of view of pilot, does your control strategy match the feeling? Of flying and drone using standard commercial controllers, it's it's much more easy because uh, when you look at I just ah the sound is on. I don't know if you have the sound. I just want to so you can see they pilot it with something that is close to 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 games, so it's much easier. Just uh, you, you, you leave everything. It stops. You go forward, backward, and 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 you turn around yourself, and that's all. So it's much more easy. Okay. So it's and possible for young people to young people pilot. can play with that. It's it's very intuitive. The idea was to 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 try to to build uh, control of UAV that are very intuitive. Okay. So I think there are control strategy around. That yeah. for avoid yeah. to avoid uh, collisions, to avoid uh, saturation of the control. Uh, we also put saturation on the speeds of uh, every state variables uh, in order to avoid that that the UAV uh, switch too fast, so that the the, the pilot cannot um, cannot react uh, to 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 the movement. Okay, well, it's very impressive that uh, all the thing you are doing, Nicolas. So thank you very much. I don't know if Jose yes. has yeah, I, I, I'm here. Uh, yeah, I would like to, we don't have much time, unfortunately, but I was very interested in the last thing that you talk about, uh, drone racing. Are you going to organize an autonomous drone racing, racing in France or? Uh, we. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we will do it. Uh, we, we we just succeeded in a in a big project that uh, Fermi mentioned that is called Tyrex uh, of to twelve million euros. And uh, uh, in that project, uh, we want to have 
uh, an outdoor uh, area for uh, for flying UAVs with motion capture, so we can compare uh, what we get from uh, from from GPS and from classical positioning systems uh, with the the, the real uh, place. And we could organize something like that. Also, the second uh, platform that will be uh, developed in France will be in Marseille. And in Marseille, they will, they will have a, a sort of, of terrain that mixes outdoor and indoor flights. And we can, we can do racing because you, it's, it's a circular uh, terrain. So Probably we will try to organize this, but uh, we, we need time to build uh, to build the thing. Well, but that means that you are also getting ready for the challenge. Yeah, of uh, course, I'm working yeah, on that. Let's, <laughs> no, I, let's I'm see. also working for for industrial purpose. Sure. Clearly, sure. Uh, having something that is a plug and play is something that is uh, very needed for by by industrial people, and also there is many usage of UAVs. Uh, where uh, they don't want to pay someone that is uh, registered and so on. So they want to have the usage of UAV that becomes much more easier and much more safe. Definitely. So it's clearly an evolution of, uh, of UAVs. Definitely. I have to tell you that uh, among the members of this audience and uh, of the IMAP community, some researchers have worked on the autonomous drone racing as well. So I'm pretty sure that, and hopefully after this pandemic, times uh, we may see each other in one of these competitions so hopefully in france but uh, professor thank you very much for your talk i mm -hmm. found it uh, exciting and quite interesting um so we will send you a virtual certificate of your participation but we are <laughs> we are humble for your uh, support and participation with this amazing keynote thank you very much thank you for the invitation Thank you. People are still processing this invitation. Huh? See you in June. Great. Thank you. And